So God is just so good. Yes. And uh, we're going to start us. It's hope in the dark. Where where are you, God? I don't know if you've ever been in a situation in your life and you're like, God, where are you? And and this morning as I was praying, it reminded me of a in my last church as a youth pastor, I was playing uh, uh, hide and go seek with uh, <laughs> with um, with my students, and we had uh, probably about eighty students, and we were doing a lock in. <laughs> I am so glad that the Lord has delivered me from lock-ins. Um, <laughs> we, we were doing it, it was called a 30-hour famine, and we were, we were doing this 30-hour famine, and we, uh, we had this one uh, closet up in the second story of this church that they stored all the camping gear for the Royal Rangers. Royal Rangers is the Boy Scouts of the, of the Assemblies of God. And uh, so they had teepee poles, which are really long poles that were stuffed in this. And I decided to hide behind all the tip, teepee poles. And so I stuffed myself behind all the teepee poles. And so throughout the night, I had a cell phone, so I would call down to the kitchen phone, and I would call them, and I would say, I know what you're doing. And all the girls would start screaming. So I did that about three or four times. But unbeknownst to me, I got stuck in this closet behind the teepee poles. So I called my, uh, my, my youth sponsor, Jason Orbaugh, which um, you interned here. And I called him on his cell phone. I said, Jason, I says, it's dark in here. I need your help. Will you come help me? If you know anything about Jason Orbaugh, he doesn't come alone. He brought like half the youth group to open that closet door to help me out. So he opened that door with half of the youth group. As they opened the door, I'm stuck behind these poles and to help me out, not to help me out, to laugh at me. So, but hope in the dark is is the story about Habakkuk and how sometimes we get to a place in our life that we're in dark places and we ask God, why is this happening to us? Believing God uh, is good when life is not. And sometimes life that we're going through stuff is not as good as it portrays. I mean, sometimes life stinks. Um, and we're like, okay, I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know what's going on. Um, my mom, I lost several, ch- um, uh, had miscarriage carriages. And why does that happen? Why does dark stuff happen in our life? And what do we do with that? Um, we, we thought, Carrie and I didn't think we were ever going to have children. Now we have two kids. We were freaking out about that when... Abby came along because we didn't think we were going to have kids. Why in dark places, and, and we're believers in Christ, we follow Christ with all our heart, and all of a sudden we go, okay, God, why are you doing this to us? You know, um, we've been faithful, we tithed, we went to church, we did all this stuff, but we have these dark places. We ask questions, God, why God? You know what? God can handle the why questions. Do you know that? God can handle the why questions. So uh, we're going to start the series. The series was put together uh, out of this book by Craig Groeschel called Hope in the Dark. Phenomenal book. I would suggest if you're in the midst of uh, dark places, pick up this book. It will encourage your heart. In fact, when I picked up this book for the first time, I love reading books. I actually thought of so many different people that I would just love to start to hand this book out like crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm too cheap because they were like 15 bucks a piece. And then someone found them like for like six bucks in Topeka. So uh, Lifeway Books has them for like six bucks a piece. So um, get, it, get to Topeka and grab them. Uh, someone in my church found them for like that cheap. So um, anyways, great book. So let's get in this uh, beginning of... 
the series. Today is we're going to talk about hope in the dark. Where are you, Lord? And, and the story behind the book is, is this. Adrian's baby is, is the beginning uh, quote from the book. Um, and, and here's the, the backstory of this book. Um, and the story begins like this. It's about an amazing family that Gr- Craig talks about. They were praying and asking God to help them to conceive so they could get pregnant. It took a while. They were waiting and they were waiting and they were waiting and nothing were happening. One day, Adrian bound in, into the office and she went, and I knew it, you were pregnant. And she said, yeah, and hugged each other. And she started crying and I fought away the tears and we hugged again. It was amazing. A couple of weeks went by and when she came back in the office, you could tell that it was one of the darkest days of her life. She had lost the child. And we hugged again and we cried again and, and it was a different kind of crying and it was again a different kind of hug. I sent her home and said to her, Don't come back for a while, just be. And I was so, uh, and was so, and this was her, that I wanted her to write something for her to give her a gift. I've been studying the book of Habakkuk. This is from Greg Rochelle. And so I, I just took the words of Habakkuk and started putting words to it. I thought it to be in a few pages and I wrote all night. I got up the, the early before work the next day and wrote all morning and I wrote the next night and the next morning and I wrote a lot, didn't mean to. And when she came back in, I said, I'm sorry, it's just long before the words for you. I gave it to her. She went home that night, she read them and she came back the next day and said, those words were for me. And that's it. I gave it to her and I spoke to her the very real way and I put in a document aside and forgot about it. Years went by and a few a year and a a few years ago my second daughter Mandy got married to James and the weeks before the wedding she got really really sick. And we just knew this is unfortunate. It it it's inconceivable. It's too bad. But by the time her honeymoon was over she'll be better. She wasn't. A couple weeks more, she'll be better. She wasn't. A few more months more, she'll be better. She wasn't. We started to wonder. I started to hurt. I started to ask questions. All right, God, why are you letting this happen? I remember the words that God gave for someone else, for Adrian, and I thought, I'll read them. And it was if God had given them to someone else for me. I spoke them in the same way, the same real way. And that's when I decided to write this book to help someone else wrote. And see, the very fact is that when we we as parents or when something takes place in our life, we think we have a word for someone else, but God has a direct word for us. And and we find it in Habakkuk's life. And it's interesting about Habakkuk. It, it's, it's, he, he's part of the 12 minor prophets. He's a temple musician. He's a priest. What is a prophet? Prophet is one who speaks to people on behalf of God. And, and interesting time. It's 600 years before the birth of Christ. And nothing of Judah uh, impoverished. What has been impoverished is injustice, corruption, violence. Uh, Habakkuk is, is literally beside himself. He's confused, perplexed, baffled, disappointed, angry. He's, he's questioning God in his, in his book. He says, why are you allowing this? You could stop it, but don't. But see, Habakkuk is, is, doesn't ease up on messaging God. He doesn't butter, uh, butter God up. He's upset. He doesn't hold back. He says, God, why doesn't Why doesn't God seem fair? 2,000 years ago, it's the same today. See, vision prophecy 
basically, um, in Hebrews, listen to this, Hebrews 1, 2 through 3, it says, How long must I call for help, but you do not listen or cry out for you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do, why do you tolerate wrongdoing? How long do you not listen or cry out to you? Violence, but you do not save. See, Habakkuk doesn't get it. No God, knows God, could intervene, but doesn't. He appreciates brutal honesty. Names and name tells the story. See, here's the very fact. In, in Hebrews 1, 2 through 3, he's, 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 he's embracing, he's telling God, look, here's a situation. You know what's going on, but you're not doing anything. He's saying, hey, embrace what's happening. Or better yet, wrestle. Or if you're in the southern or the south, it's wrestle. It's almost like this, this very crazy sitcom is happening. It's, it's this craziness is taking place. It's like you're in this job and you lose a job to get a better job and the benefits are cut and you, you, it, it's just this twist of craziness just begins to happen. And you know what's taking place, but you're just confusing and you begin to get into a dark place. Like, like a job. Lose a job. Don't get a better job. Bankruptcy. Failure. It's, it's this dark place. Or better yet, like life. You love life. You're in this great place. Then you get a bad medical report. You pray. You fight chemo, it goes away, and then it's back again. It's this dark place. Light, dark, light, dark. And you say, God, why don't you help me? Why don't you show up? Can't conceive, you pray, you trust. And then you find people who don't even want kids, and you're like, okay. The situation I, I ran into a big topic today is abortion, but I ran into a person that was having a birth abortion and, and all of a sudden I, I, this person was having an abortion and I found a couple who ha, was wanting a child and I says, would you be willing to have your child so this person, this people could, this couple could have a child and, and this person says, no, I'm still going to have an abortion. I just killed that couple. You know, the very fact is some people just don't get it. You're faithful to God. You, you read your Bible, you pray, you serve. You, but you're still battling migraines. You're still battling depression. But you're faithful to God and you, you're in this dark place. Why? I've been in other countries. I've been to Africa and I see suffering. I see starving children and racism and terrorism and and we hear about school shootings and we see all of this stuff and they're suffering and God is a God of love and compassion. We, we see this and we go, God, why? And he can intervene. Then we look at Hebrews 1, 3 through 4. Why, why do you, you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abound therefore the law paralyzes and justice not prevails see habakkuk habakkuk had problems with god see here's the problem is he uh, it, he has this thing he says god you you don't seem really to care you allow injustice and suffering uh, but god you you aren't really you aren't doing much when you could. Or, or three, God, you're, you're, you're what, what are you doing doesn't seem fair. See, it's, 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 is it ever okay to question God? Yes, it really is. Because one third of the Psalms are prayers of song or songs of people hurting. 
See, authors of Job, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, and Jeremiah expresses confusion and, pl- and pain and unbearable suffering by faith and believers. <laughs> In fact, Jesus asked God why. In the notes, you actually see this cool graphic that it is a line and a squiggly line. It's your mountaintop experience that brings down to crisis, that brings you to strong faith. It's almost like a seminary story. You see, in mountaintop experience, you go to church and you hear a great sermon or a song and your prayer. And then you, you come down to a crisis, sees eyes, a different belief, believe in a heart. You, it, it just, something happens. It, 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 one of my friends, Eric Smith, calls it the oodle loop. It, it kind of knocks you in your, in your, it messes you up, right? It, it just messes you up. You, you, you come and you, you have this spiritual high. Everything's going great. You know, you go to a revival, you, you get that spiritual high, and all of a sudden something just knocks you up underneath your feet. But God never left you. He's still there, but we think he's left us. But God has never left us. He's still the light of the world. He hasn't denied us. He hasn't pretend to forget forget about us. He still loves us. And we wrestle with our faith. But how do we keep our strong faith? We we embrace, we wrestle with it. We, We consider it pure joy. It says in the Bible, consider it all pure joy, no matter what happens. Questions about God faith struggles, we, we, we struggle, we, we work through it, we consider it, we work through it. Yes, we're going to have struggles, we're going to have, we're going to have dark places, but when we get through it, we can get through it, we can move through it. God can handle the why questions, but the question is, can we handle the answers that he gives us? That's the That's the biggest things. We ask the questions, but can we handle the answers? God's response. Well, God's response is found in Habakkuk. Sorry, Habakkuk. I keep on saying Hebrews, but it's Habakkuk. 1.5, One five. look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am doing something in your days that you do not believe. Even if you were told, listen, in this one, he says a couple things, be utterly amazed. You would not believe. There's a couple of things you need to pull out of this passage of scripture. Don't understand, just wait, not finished, amazed. Be utterly amazed. You would not believe. Look at the nations and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe. God's about ready to do something in your life that you may not even fathom in your life. It's almost like that flickering light in a dark area. And you're like, wait a minute. I can see the light, but I don't really believe it's there. I'm having difficulty believing because my life is so dark. I'm going through so many different problems. How am I supposed to really believe that light's there? Negative nanny is always in your face. Saying, how can I really believe that's a light? How can I believe that someone actually is showing me the exit door? It's like being in a theater and someone screams fire and the lights are all out and someone's showing you the light to the exit door and you're still saying, I, I, I don't believe there's a fire. I don't believe my life is at risk. Even though there's a light, you're just going to sit there and burn instead of going for the light. See, Jesus is the light of the world, and we're, we have the answers, but we don't want to really believe in. It says here in Habakkuk 6, 1, 6, uh, 
sorry, 1 5, it says, Be utterly amazed that God is going to do something new in your days. It's that hope in the dark. It's that, it's that light. Are you going to go for the light? Are you going to really believe that God has the answers for your problem? That God's going to get you through? Or are you going to sit there and go, well, I really like being in the dark. My children, when they were little, they were utterly scared of the dark. They, they, would, they would literally, I had to buy them little iPods so they can listen to praise and worship to calm their spirits so that they could listen to praise and worship because when you bring worship in to that fear, fear dissipates. Listen, you need to bring worship. You need to bring praise. You need to bring Jesus into your dark place. There should be a whole lot of comments saying amen on that one. That was a really good comment. So, all right. The next thing we need to look at is Habakkuk 1. Well, it went back the wrong way. Habakkuk 1, 6 through 7 and 9, it says this. I'm raising up the Babylon, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are a fear and dreaded people. They are come intended on violence. It makes no sense, not fair, not right. A committed believer can both wrestle with honest questions and embrace a genuine faith in God. See, he, a committed believer can both wrestle with honest questions and embrace a genuine faith in God. So there's the whole thing with that is we can be able to get that honest question, ask that honest question, and, and really research it, but also get that, keep that faith in God. It's like, it's like someone struggling with, I do believe in God, Help me be, help me overcome. Help me overcome. Habakkuk 1, 12. Let me see if I can get this right now. Habakkuk 12, 1, 12 through 13. Lord, are you not from everlasting my God, my Holy One, you will never die. You are Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment. You are my rock, have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then you, do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while wicked swallow up more righteous than themselves? So out of this passage of scripture, we can understand that this is God understands your pain. He welcomes your questions. Rather have you yell at him than walk away from him. So let's deal with the three here. God understands your pain. He understands what you're going through. He understands the circumstances that you're dealing with. He understands every aspect. So then you go to the second one. Welcomes your question. God, why are you allowing me to go through this? Should everything in my life be perfect? Absolutely not. We live in a dark and depraved world that things begin to happen and things begin to take place. So we have to understand pain happens. And he can handle the questions that you ask him. But you got to understand, he can also handle you yelling at him. He'd rather have you yell at him than walk away from him. He'd rather have you yelling at him. There's a movie back in the day called The Apostle. And he, the, the Apostle is an old, old movie. And the, the guy was a traveling preacher. He would go to the upstairs of the attic and he would scream at God <laughs> and then go preach. God can handle that. 
Because he'd rather have you with him than you going to hell. Walking away, blaming him for all the circumstances in your life. Because sometimes what happens is we go, look, this is what God did to me. This is what God did to my life. Look at everything that happened in my life that is bad. Look, God doesn't love me. God had thrown me to the wolves. Look at all the things that he did to me. I'm going to walk away because I blame him for that. So can I ask you a question? Is it really God's fault that all this stuff happened in your life? Or did it just stuff happen? Sometimes stuff just happens. I stand before you as a burn victim, and, and, and this week I was watching a thing on Facebook Live, and this woman goes, because she had scaling done, she had some, some beauty problems done in her, her face, and she started out her whole thing because she had some stuff done on her face. She says, I look like a burn victim. And I was so offended by that. I actually could not even pay attention to that. I went, you have no idea what a burn victim looks like or what a burn victim goes through. And I just kind of went, I, turned, I went on reading something else because in my, that just hurt my heart because nobody understands what a person like a burn victim goes through or a, um, a person that got, gone through di different things. I will never understand what someone that went through being raped or abused or anything. I will never know what someone like that goes through. But I will never blame God for what has gone in my life. I have hope. I'll show you the book, Hope in the Dark. God is there in the dark places of each one of our lives. So he can handle my yelling at him. He can handle my thing, but I'll never walk away from him. So if you hit a wall in your crisis, climb a mountain. If you hit a trial or you're burdened, you're not doomed. You, you just keep going. Forrest Gump, keep running. Keep running, keep running. Forrest Gump sits on a bench. He says, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Energize a bunny. Keep moving. Keep moving. Indiana Jones. With all the snakes that he has in his movies, you got to keep moving. Don't deny your doubts. Let your doubts drive you to God. Don't, de don't deny your doubts. Let your doubts drive you to God. What if honestly acknowledgement your doubts is the first step toward a building a deeper faith? What if embracing your secret questions opened the door for a maturing knowledge of God's character? What if becoming closer to God developed genuine intimacy with him requires you to bear that which feels unbearable? To hear him through an, an utterance. To trust him in the moment of doom. To embrace his strength when you're weak with a burden? What if it takes real pain to experience deep and abiding hope? And that's from the book. Habakkuk embraced or he wrestled. See, God will never give you more than I can bear or handle. That's what the Bible says. He, can, he will never give you more than you can bear or handle. See, the problem with that statement is we come to the point where he says, God, I can't handle anymore. But God really knows what we can handle. So here's the deal. Going to be better? You may not. You may get worse. 
But we have to remember Mandy or Arian or Adrian at the beginning of the, about the baby, losing the baby as soon as they got pregnant and hit that dark spot, hit that, we never know what kind of darkness you guys are in. We all hit dark spots. How we respond to those darkness? How we respond to the darkness in our life? Are we going to draw closer to God and let God bring us through that? Or are we going to just respond and say, God, I'm just... See, God can handle the yelling, but he can't handle you walking away. So I'm going to close in prayer and just pray for you. And just believe that if you're in a dark spot in your life, that God will give you the hope. Because you might be watching this this morning and, and, and you might be in a dark spot and God wants to speak to you and God has been speaking to you this whole time. So I'm going to pray for you. Because you might be asking these questions. And so let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for this message. I thank you for what you're doing already. I pray for those who are here and those who are watching. Lord, if we're in a dark spot, we're saying, God, why are you allowing this to happen? Why am I going through this? Why, 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 why? Lord, you're, you're strong enough and you're loving enough that you can handle the why questions. Lord, you are the light in a dark place. Lord, may we follow that light because you are the holder of all the answers. And Lord God, we just submit to you. And we praise you for that. And we submit to that. Lord, you can handle the questions. You can handle the yelling. You can handle it all. Help us not walk away. Help us to draw closer to you. Lord, we thank you for that. And we praise you for that. Because you are amazing. And Lord, you are God. And we will praise you with all that's in us, Lord. We love you with all our heart, mind, and soul, Lord. In your name, amen. God, God bless you. We love you. And if you don't have a church, come and join us for a service here on First Assembly of God, corner of 9th and Yuba, 514 South 9th, Burlington, Kansas. Come and join us for a service Sundays at 1030. God bless you. Love you guys. Both blank with honesty.